Happy Saturday, guys. Welcome to another episode on I Heart Doha Podcast, mm-hmm. uh, our weekly episode. You guys are uh, the guests. And uh, right. you know that little uh, voice that pops up in every Instagram video and this is your stories. You know what I mean? But uh, welcome along, Arvi so and uh, Noel. I'm so excited about this episode. How do you guys feel about it? Um, we'll see how it goes. Yeah? Yeah, we'll see how it goes. I have to be pretty diplomatic. Yeah. Um, I got to be <laughs> diplomatic about it, huh? Uh, I'll try to be. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's feeling great. Thanks for having us. Yeah, of course, man. Of course. So, uh, you know what? I really want to get to the chase and I want to understand more about the work you do, the activism. You're very active on Instagram. I've seen all the work you do and I think that a lot of people want to know the motive behind it and how you did it, how long you've been doing it. Tell me a bit about it. So, um, you first. Ladies first. I was about to say that for you. All right. But all right. (laughs) She's a comedian too. Let's not forget about that stand-up comedian. So um, we're breaking a free comedian jokes for you. Um. All right. Let's see how this goes. Let's see it again. All right. I'm a stand-up comedian who can't stand up. (laughs) And I'm really glad there's like a fort. You let it go. (laughs) So what was what I've been basically doing? I got into comedy because I didn't get. I wasn't getting my education. Okay. So the best way of basically talking about it and m- making people take it seriously okay. was through comedy, ironically, because okay. uh, I feel like when you make people laugh, they, they, you know, people they want to feel some, they want to feel relatable to something, right? Okay. And I think the re- relatability it connects people faster than you can or humor. If you make someone laugh, um, they connect with you because everyone knows how to cry and laugh. So. So you use comedy to reach out to people? No. Yeah. Comedy is a very good tool for communication. Yeah. It breaks barriers. You agree with that, Ari? To some extent, yes. To some extent, yeah. To some extent. I feel like you're a serious guy. You're not really into jokes and stuff. Uh, no, I am into jokes. Yeah. Uh, but I really don't. I think for the past five, six years, I've been so busy. So okay. Uh, with my entrepreneurship, with my business, okay. and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, like, it's Successful like, on the scene. Uh, I don't believe I'm that successful yet. Yeah, yeah well, trust me, you'll ask all the more people that I know <laughs> starting so up much. their own business and working on that. But yeah, you were saying, no, guess back to that Sorry, little Kerry. track of yours. Okay, so for me, it was basically because I, I got taken out of education because of my disability. Okay. And then after, when trying to get back into school, it was basically I was too, I was special for normal schools, okay. but I wasn't special enough for special schools. Okay. So... Okay. So I was in that gray area. Um, You're like in the middle, yeah? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm, the mid- I'm the middle child, the middle of everything. Oh, God. Okay. I'm the middle child that gets attention. Um, <laughs> you gotta love the attention. You gotta love the attention. I know, right? Um, so, yeah, so basically because of that, I was just, I just stuck in a really dark hole. And then I realized that comedy was the one thing that like made everything easier for me in a sense because I, I was in a wheelchair. I went to a wheelchair yeah. and then they came out, I became really bitter at everyone to the point I didn't leave the house for like two or three years. Okay. I was just stuck at home and um, now I realized like I wasted a lot of time. Okay. Like I like so from twelve to fourteen, fifteen I was like at home. Okay. And then around say turning fifteen, I started in comedy. And now the thing that happened I think when you begin comedy, you're still learning. But what brought that idea for you? Like, what's the trigger to that idea? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the weird thing happened. Like, are you so, funny at home? People laugh at you? Yeah, like, you like jokes? exactly. The, the, just the humor between my friends. I'm the funny one. Yeah. So, I know, right? Um, dark humor. Um, so, after that, basically what happened was that, like, when I was around 13, 12 years old, I saw about stand-up comedy cut up. And I actually wanted to go and perform. And ironically, they agreed, but I never went to the show. Okay. So after that, I kept seeing they eventually started getting bigger. So I wanted to go and perform to see how it was. Okay. And I kept telling, I kept bugging my mom, and my mom's like, "You have to go, go do it, and stop like stop talking about it, go do it." Yeah. So I went that day, and then it went well. I, I'm surprised. It went well. The second show was horrible. Third one was a hit. Because after the third one... Um, I've seen I, a couple of videos for you. You're, people are like cracking laughing. Yeah, right. that's after like three years of doing comedy. Did you practice some jokes? Did you watch some people that motivated you or something? Um, Actually, yeah. There's like Gabriel Iglesias. What about Dave Chappelle? Have you ever tried Oh, that? Oh, yeah. 
That's a big man right there. Come on, yeah, if you don't exactly. listen to Dave Chappelle, you got issues, all right? I'm just saying. No, no, no. Dave Chappelle is good. But he's not the type of comedy he's I would do good. in Qatar. Just good. He's amazing, okay? <laughs> but his type of com- like, yeah, you have yeah, to do yeah. a lot of comedy. Yeah, a lot of comedy. Yeah, a lot of comedy. I do a lot of comedy. Like, <laughs> keep it a hello. Yeah, well. um, because if you don't, you get like a fine, okay. a mega fine. Yeah, okay. So that's why, you know, I have to um, assert my comedy to the uh, audience I'm in. Okay. If I'm in the States, I'll do my comedy a bit more loosely about it. Okay, yeah. yeah. And if I'm in Qatar, I have to keep it hello. Okay. So, <laughs> the term is funny. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but seriously, yeah. So, I started doing quote unquote halal <laughs> comedy. And then, after what happened, that started getting picked up. Because the thing is, in Qatar, people seen like people with disabilities perform on stages, but like on YouTube, websites, okay. or whatever. But they've never seen it in real life. Okay. So, when they're watching it, they want to laugh. But they're, they're, they're like, are we laughing with her or out of her? I'm like, this is a comedy show. You know, okay. this is not a fart. Like, you can let it go. Like, you know? Okay. And that was actually a warm-up. Yeah. That sounds weird, but if... <laughs> that was a warm-up at comedy shows that I was like... I was, you, you got that little sarcastic kind of serious humor, you know what I mean? Have you always been hanging around with her, laughing a lot with that? Or? Uh, not much, but like, yeah. She actually invited me to a couple of her shows. But, okay, uh, you never been? No, I got the chance actually. He doesn't it, like you, really. I know, right? Yeah, yeah, no. Hey, sure. <laughs> some no, dark so humor, true. yeah? Here you go, no, picking up some of your humor. Right? No, that's not true. No, no, <laughs> no, no, no. We're just joking. I'm pulling your leg. Yeah. <laughs> no, actually, no. By the way, like, she invited me. It was. Okay. She invites me in a really awkward time, so either like, I have to be okay. in a family gatherings, or either I'm already engaged in. Okay, or something, yeah. some kind of work. But, yeah. Not work, but it's mainly like other. Activities like with other friends and stuff. Like oh, okay. So like okay. they'll be like already pre-booked. So it's like that's the other issue. So. You know, I've, I've been hanging out with you guys. Like this is the second time I meet, but mm. I'm, it's like the fourth, third time I met you, right? Yeah. And I felt like every time you crack a joke, like you have to tell them that it's a dark humor. You know what I mean? And yeah. then when they get, they start laughing. But at the beginning, they're like, huh? What she means? You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> but then I kind of get some of these under um, like the carpet jokes. It's like the kind of like humor Dave Chappelle sometimes cracks, like kind of serious, but you'd have to think about it, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm I've... a big fan of stand-up comedy myself. So. Hashtag dark humor. Yeah, hashtag dark humor. I know, right? Yeah. Like, even today I was like, um, a group, I was sitting in a group of like, and I'm just full of women. Yeah. And I'm cracking dark jokes. Now they want to laugh. Okay. But they look at my face. It looks too innocent. Like, this face is too innocent. Yeah. And so they're like, should we laugh or cry? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. What did you tell them? And you try. And you know what? You enjoy to make them awkward, right? Yeah, I know you. I know you. you like wait and like give them a like face. <laughs> so you got to make them feel awkward. Mm-hmm. But good. But tell me more about your activism and also before we get to that part. Actually, I wanted to tell you, Arvi, that I really wanted to know more about the things that you've been doing, also related to the business, to the field. You know, right. this is like my second time I met you, but I'm sure. inspired by some of the things that I heard about you. And I think a lot of people would want to hear that. So can you tell us about sure. it? Actually, my journey has been really uh, adventurous, I would say. Um, okay. Back in 2008, my mom was uh, hospitalized. Okay. So at that time, and uh, the way we, we have been raised, I, I even have an elder brother who's also physically disabled. Okay. He's, he's also a retreat user, okay. like me. So, like, yeah, so, like, the whole life has been a bit adventurous. So, the back in 2008, my mom was hospitalized. Yeah. And there was no decent transportation service that okay. I could reach to the hospital to see her. Okay, yeah. So, at that time, I think I was 16. Okay. How old are you now? Now, like, I'm 26. Oh, you're my age, yeah? Are you a Virgo? How old are you? Leo. Yeah, I'm sorry, I only talk to Virgos. See, that's a Virgo thing right now, perfectionism right now. Hashtag dark humor. <laughs> I'm a Scorpio, so. Oh no! <laughs> oh yeah, you're September 13th, right? Yeah. <laughs> She's September 13th and I'm August 13th. Oh, so okay, like, okay. So well, at least we get along a bit. But yeah, tell me about it. So, like, yeah, so from there, like. I think months passed on, my mom was hospitalized for almost okay. three months. So then I realized, I think in the future I should 
get things done, like maybe if nothing is done now, maybe I should get something done later. So yeah. I was busy with my homeschooling. Okay. Um, even I had the same issue, like no home. Uh, lots of schools they don't accept okay. uh, a child with disabilities okay. and certain issues. So yeah, back in 2013, I started my own company, okay. which serves uh, rights with pe rights for people who are uh, a wheelchair users. Okay. So then the adventure starts, okay. and now it's been like I think five years now. You you start, It's been like five years ever since yeah. you started the company. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. So you know what? Sometimes a lot of people start up some businesses or even books or any any kind of form of establishment. Um, Sometimes the pain is the drive towards that. You know what I mean? I had a couple of friends that wrote books and they've mm -hmm. actually been through a painful experience mm -hmm. and they started writing a book. And I really totally understand what you're trying to say. You know what I mean? Because uh, I, I, back in the day, I lost a very close relative to me and um, I really wanted to start writing a book. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? That inspired me to write and document mm -hmm. the scenes that I've seen throughout the funeral homes. Mm -hmm. I didn't start it, but I kind of relate to what you were saying. You know? Mm -hmm. And so that's actually very powerful for you to somehow use the difficulties and start something um, yeah. like positive with it. A lot of people would just not even like, you know. Yeah, you know, my main, one of the main things where I, like I had to talk a lot about because um, since every investment was from on my side, but like, okay. my family was a huge support for sure. That's good, man. So the thing was, every time it was in my mind, like there are other people Maybe there are other Aries who are, okay. you know, back home and maybe they want to see their okay. parents, friends, families, yeah. members or whatever, like, yeah. what are happening to them. So, like, yeah. Yeah. that was also, like, one of the reasons. Maybe, yes, it's part of a business, but, again, at the same time. It's also it's for a cause. It's also for a cause, yes. Yeah. So, and, and, and how many... Um, how many like uh, cars have you grew into, or like the business? Can you tell us more about it? Uh, so far, we are having about uh, three cars for the on-call bookings. Okay. And the rest are just uh, uh, based on what we get as what we get as corporate okay. bookings or something like that. Okay. It's so, like yeah, that's how it's running. Uh, so, we'll definitely put uh, we'll tag it uh, for you guys down um, later on in the. Channel which is iHeartDoha underscore the same podcast channel, and uh, we'll definitely give you more details about it just in case you know if sure, you want to sure, log sure, into yeah, it sure. and see it. Now, back to you with uh, the sarcastic face. I can see you throwing it at us at all. every time you and me we chill. She always gives us that face. Have you noticed yep, that? Yep. <laughs> what face? <laughs> That's like mm, you too, you know what I mean? So <laughs> I can read it, you know. So tell me about that activism. I actually never had a chance to always ask you about the activism that you kicked in. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. you're always a speaker, you're always on stage. I've seen you so many times on stage holding microphones. And doing, is it always related to stand-up or other stuff? Um, it really depends. Like, Because yeah. I try to talk more about media representation of people with disabilities. Okay. Since, okay, when you see in the media industry, like in the States and the Europe side, yeah. it took them like over 100 years to realize it's wrong to mock people with disabilities in movies. Oh, it took okay. them over like a hundred years okay. and I feel like in Qatar we don't need to take hundred years to realize that yeah. like we can represent people with disabilities as who they are yeah. as normal human beings like can they do comedy acting whatever yeah. so because when I was younger like when I knew we went some wheelchair I didn't find anyone that's a female with a disability that's into sports fashion or comedy nothing so it made me want to go into that just to show, like, just so in the future, no girls can say in Qatar that, oh, there's no girl in fashion, there's no girl in comedy, there's no girl in sports. Because I have taken every single field you can imagine and, yeah. like, just dominated it. So I, I've been doing that, like, with comp, but it's one by one. Like, I used to in Paralympics, I didn't think, I didn't think it was taking me anywhere. So I left that and I went to the comedy. Now, comedy actually took me really far. Um, but the thing is, um, the thing is, because of so, because of the lack of representation, there's only like one stand-up comic with a disability in Qatar. Only one. That's how. Like, imagine if we had more representation, more awareness, that to normalize disability, we would have had more comedians with disability, and it wouldn't be okay, weird. Okay, but like, um, what I'm trying to say is. 
that the point is how you've been running it for the past mm-hmm. while, which is I've seen a lot of people actually representing. Like this is Paralympics. There's a couple of people doing a lot of stuff. Uh, I've even known a couple of friends actually in the Paralympics. Mm-hmm. But what you're doing is like to raise more awareness about disability. Yeah. You're trying to like throw a positive image about people uh, mm-hmm. with disabilities. To normalize them. To normalize them, but in the communities and everything like that. And how, have you ever like started doing meetups or uh, do you talk to like certain kind of like gatherings with people? Um, yes, have you ever of course. That way, yes? Um, last year I did a gala dinner where, where basically we were highlighting the success stories of people with disabilities. Okay. They're not inspirational because they have a disability. They're inspirational yeah. because they worked hard to achieve what they have. Yeah. Because people with disabilities already face so much discrimination. And like, you know, like just generally all around the world, they face discrimination. Yeah. And just to work through that discrimination and be successful in that specific field. Yeah. That's what we did last year. We highlighted um, a company of an architect with a disability. That's good. She was making uh, one of the DCC countries accessible. That's good. And that was the only company in, in that country doing it. Okay. And then in Qatar, we had Honor uh, Ari speak about his only wheelchair um limousine company in Qatar um, and then we had also from I think we had some people from Kuwait and different people around yeah. the DCC just talking about So it's about been their... kicking off really well ever since yeah? yeah yeah we basically we highlighted their success stories we that's wanted good. to that's good a lot of people are actually inspired by these kind of stories you know what I mean True. Mm-hmm. and um, even a couple of friends of mine were tuning in to the couple of posts we posted on Instagram and they're like it's good to know that even people uh, throughout the different struggles they're facing, they actually use this motive to start something positive. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, sometimes I know it could be harder for uh, some people with disabilities, especially with the transport, the accessibility towards these things. But what I like is that you two actually has been, t- like you've been taking it in a positive form to actually aware people, give it motivated, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That's I- why, like, I actually felt very um, inspired to bring you to here because I wanted people to know these stories. You know what I mean? I wanted mm-hmm. to share with the world. And uh, also by you, Arvi, like, did you ever like think about it that this is a form of awareness about people with disabilities having issues with transport? At that moment, when I just needed to execute, so yeah, I just like thought less things. Yeah, but like yeah, in the past. Um, my family's faced like many things. Yeah. Uh, since me and my brother, we were disabled, they were like, what are kids going to do? Like, yeah. They're disabled, and what's going to happen to them? Yeah. What will they do in the future? They're yeah. not uh, capable. Yeah. And stuff like that. So I was like, I mean, I, I think like when I just grew up, the only thing I learned was like to be, just be and believe in yourself. That's how like I took it. Yeah. I mean, as long as you believe... Prove and the haters wrong. Prove yeah. the haters yeah, wrong. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah, wrong. But uh, also... To haters be, are more motivators. Haters are mo- Yes, <laughs> they're the biggest motivators, actually. Yeah. <laughs> but also, to be really honest, no, actually, uh, there are also a few friends like, who, who always like, encourage them. Yeah. Like, they, they, I mean, they don't make you feel like what, what you are. They know like they treat you normal. Yeah. So I think that also like, gives you one... Uh, like, un, like, how should I say, like, undescribable, uh, undescribable passion inside you that it brings out of you, and yeah. that makes you things do. Yeah. So like, yeah, yeah. Just follow your heart, get it done, and I always believe that something will. I mean, if the hard work is like really true and honest, something has to come out of it, even if it fails. Yeah. You gain an experience and. Well, never be afraid. Never be afraid to fail as well. Yeah, definitely. You got to keep it going, man. You know, I kind of needed that motivational talk for me, because I always, I, a couple of days ago, I wrote on my Instagram and I told them, you know what, you can't wait for opportunities. You got to create your own opportunities. Exactly. Because oh, that's so true. It is, man. You know what I mean? Because if you're sitting at home and you're wondering why am I not getting chances, you know what? It's a big world. And there's a every, you gotta ponder somewhere. Yeah, you gotta find yourself somewhere, but sometimes you just gotta search for that place. You know what I mean? Thank yeah, I, I think I'd done that, like, I, I wasn't finding, like, any female with a disability. I'm like, why don't, let me just go do it. Yeah. Yeah, so I ended up going doing that. And now, now that will, itself was a huge struggle because, you know, like, culture-wise, it's like, a hey, oh my god, yeah. why she doing comedy? Yeah. Why she in fashion? She's like, she should sit at home. Like, I have photographers who worked with me. 
they were like they literally get messages they're like okay she has a pretty face but why show the wheelchair that my best friend literally receives that, that type of message she's yeah, like oh yeah. she's disabled why are you showing this thing yeah. and we're like trying to showcase that it's normal yeah, like yeah. i think the more we showcase like any like the thing is media is so freaking powerful that like if we show something regular enough it will normalize it <laughs> yeah yeah you're right you're right you're right you agree he's, he's nodding his head Picture this is anything everything. anything, yeah. anything. if you um like this might be positive or negative this may be negative what's that uh, thing that we're talking about that back in the day um the americans went about the vietnam war and they actually made movies in hollywood in order for them to somehow change the perception about the war that they actually didn't lose it that's how powerful media is i kind of heard it a couple of days ago mm. like they switched the role of what happened in, in, in vietnam you know what i mean yeah we cannot deny that fact of course and uh, what i think that uh, you've been doing is kind of different because yeah. i've never really felt i've been around people that are actually trying to put awareness uh, towards disabilities and stuff like that especially from uh, the background you know what i mean mm. but you also practice swimming is that like some sort of a practice for you or like um, um yeah the thing was um since i was like seven eight years old i was hydro i was doing hydrotherapy okay but at the same time i was a regular swimmer like i would go swimming for like three hours a week three times a week so you know i can't swim what yeah a disabled person can swim and he can't Whoa. i can't i really can't <laughs> That's the it's joke. Okay, I'll teach you. She's just cracking the jokes over. Can you see that? Yeah, she's cracking. With that physique, I, I would let you know. Uh, I'm not. I'm like a I'll cat see. in the water. You know, like. I'll <laughs> teach you. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I'll drown. I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I hate the water. You're like, should we save her or him first? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hashtag dark humor. Yeah. There you go. There you go. But yeah. So you said three hours a week. Yes, this is when I was younger, like, say till I was, um, uh, till I was like 11 years old, and this was because, um, you know, that time I was not in a wheelchair, so after I went, like, say I was like 12 years old when I went on wheelchair around that time, uh, there were no facilities in Qatar, so basically what happened, when I went on wheelchair, I, I automatically gained a lot of weight, like in two, three years, because there was nothing accessible for me to go exercise. Okay. Um, th there was no accessibility in that, uh, in that, even in hospitals. There was no accessibility that time. So I couldn't do hydrotherapy. Um, I was just depressed, mad at the world. So I ended up gaining a lot of weight. And, um, and then I think when I was like, around, yeah, I think 14, 15 was like my, uh, what did I say, golden years? Like The golden it, era? Golden era, exactly. The Maximus Alexandrus. <laughs> The horse to Troy. <laughs> but <laughs> in a sense that I like I got into Zumba and I lost the weight and um, then after that what happened I got back into swimming. Okay. And I started doing scuba diving. So that was like in a year twice, three times to go scuba diving. And um, and then ever since it's been on every year I go scuba diving. Scuba diving too. Yeah. It's more fun uh, trust me, it's more fun than swimming. Okay. Yeah, it really is. Like I enjoy. I, I wouldn't know how that feels. You know, me in the water or not really. You don't see. I'm trying to relate. Me, you know what I mean. I yeah, you don't see. Yeah. You know, but you need to try <laughs> you it. Do it here. Yeah. Scuba diving. Where? Like, there's multiple spots, okay. but if you want, she can show I, I can you hook you up. Hook she's you the up. plug. <laughs> exactly, I'm everyone's plug. <laughs> she's. I was. I was man. Ari's plug. I was his plug. Yeah. I'm everyone's plug. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I are. should take money for this now. We we'll definitely are. Well, let's talk to our heart though. Let's see where we can finance that up. You know what I mean? <laughs> but uh, Arvi, tell me more about the business. Have you? Uh, do you have like an office? Do you work? Uh, do you yeah, have yeah, shifting hours? Office. Or do you have people working for you? Yeah, we have. Yeah, we have an office. And okay. We have an office and. Okay. In the, in the industry, industry yeah. Okay. So like, yeah, I. Uh, you go daily or you don't? Of course, yeah. I yeah. want to go daily because I don't. I want to make sure everything is oh, okay. as it is. I don't want to be like I know some people there will. There, I know like some. Sometimes I get that impression. Why? I mean, you're the owner. Why do you like go and go yes. every day? And it's like uh, it's not, it's a hassle. You should be. I say no, because I want to make sure everything is on the spot and to be really honest that's not uh, yeah. one of the main reasons also like since it's your own company yeah you should also like have 
uh, you should also like, support your employees. I mean. Okay. They, I mean, when you are supporting them, okay. they will support, in, I mean, in the sense like, you see how they work and when they get the appreciation, yeah. appreciation from the owners or from the higher authorities. Yeah. That's how they work like even more and they give them more dedication. So I just want to make sure every day, every employee is wow. giving all the dedication towards uh, you know, to the clients. And, and how many hours do you spend? I spend at least like five, six hours. At least. Oh, I'm serious. All right. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Because, uh, like, besides uh, transportation solutions for people with disabilities, yeah. we also have some other stuff. So I think I do everything together at once. So uh, it's better, like, that's how it's better to keep myself, you know, like, engaged in those stuff. So what yeah. the so, I mean, if you're not running your own business, who would, right? True. Exactly. Yeah. Like, can you trust people to run your own business? I mean, uh, I have man. I have uh, like I have appointed some managers, but I don't yeah. want to trust them like completely. Yeah, like, yeah. So like, uh, even like my own uh, partners, like uh, you seriously go every day. I'm like, yeah, I have to. Yeah. I can't. I can't uh, like spend the day like wasting and thinking what are they going to do and when are they going to do. Do you, do you offer also uh, jobs for people with disabilities, or like, are you open for that? So far, we we are opening that doors okay. soon because we just shifted to an accessible office. Okay. Uh, so like, yeah, even that was an issue to get an office yeah, which has yeah. a complete accessibility. Like when you like, uh, I mean, it's not there for. I mean, I mean, somehow if you see like some buildings. From outside, it looks like really accessible, and yeah. when you go inside, there's some things yeah. definitely missing. So, <laughs> yeah. so I didn't How want. How did you do that building? <laughs> yeah. So like yeah. So I didn't, I didn't want to like I didn't want to offer people something which makes it a hassle for them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, that would look bad too. Yeah. yeah. But I was just thinking straight. You know yeah. what I mean? But yeah. six hours. And if I show up two days in the world to work, I had this close to quit. You know what I mean? Every single day. Yeah, I'm not an office person, though. You know what I mean? Like I was telling a couple of friends, I can't wear a suit and tie. Just sit. And... I just go like a regular yeah. polo shirt. Yeah, a polo shirt. Um, it's your business. I mean, you just... decide. Not everyone has his own oh, business. Oh, true. Like I cannot trust anyone to be my manager. I have people that <laughs> offer to be my manager, and I'm like. No, like I have trust issues. Okay. Because I think no one can do your work best as you can. Yeah. Or no one can know, like, the thing is, sometimes people trust other people with their work too much, and then they're disappointed with the results. I'm like, you were never on board in the first place. No. You need to take yeah. control and charge of what you want. Yeah. So do that and let others follow. You didn't bring the food to the table. What's that model, right? If you didn't bring the food to the table, you can't eat with us? I heard it in a rap song, all right? Stop giving me the old looks. I kind of pick these stuff, you know? It's Ace, Ace, what? Ace Hood. Did you, did you eat for food? <laughs> <laughs> it was all right, it was all right. But yeah, it's the same motto, you know what I mean? But sadly, I'm not really into the business world. That's why I'm kind of broke, you know? Mm -hmm. It's okay. Are you doing what you like? <laughs> that's that's the motivational I, speech, right? I think in, I think it's not about just like having an entrepreneurship. The main thing is even if even like if you're doing something, just enjoy with it. Like yeah. I'm pretty sure, like after ten years down the line, yeah. I'm not going to focus much as I'm going to focus now. Yeah. Like I'm pretty sure, like I'm like ah, it's time to take something yeah. different. So like yeah. Is this something you like or like, are you happy? Like, did you see yourself doing this like for, yeah, yeah. for a long time? Uh, for now, I know I'm doing it, but yeah. I'm pretty sure like after 10 years, I'm not, I mean, I, I'll, I'll still be a part of it, but I'm, I will still give my dedications, yeah. but I'm pretty sure I'm going to do, also, I'm also going to start something okay. different at the same Do you time. take emergency calls? Like for example, someone like in an urgent situation in Canada, or just I, like regular transportation, like Uber and stuff like that. Or like, uh, you mean like regular rides or? Yeah, regular rides or sometimes. We do, but we try to focus more. And and, the, and these cars are like very equipped, very. Uh, we follow the international standards. Okay. It's called the ADA, the American Disability Act. Okay. So we make sure that the car is like fully equipped with. 
Okay. With, this, with the safety systems, with the tie downs, okay. with the lifts and everything. And we need to also also always make sure the drivers are completely trained. Okay, so you get trained drivers and everything, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Is it like one driver and there's someone else or just a driver? Like for, a few, for a few days it will be, like the new driver will be trained with the train driver. Okay. So, and I think I love is one of the Oh yeah, witnesses. true, true. I, I've, been, I've been their customer, I'm not paid to say anything, so I just like give that out. But I use it custom. I'm a custom. I'm a regular customer, and the thing is, they're on time. And the thing I love about this that they're on time. The drivers are trained. They know the proper manner. Like everything's there. Okay. And even like I think, um, especially I think you know mothers are really concerned. Their daughters are going alone. Like whatever. Yeah. Generally different. Um, mothers of you know girls with disabilities yeah. so they usually their concern or whatever like they're just like back in their head like it's it's still always trust me it's still always there um these are like the unhidden set talks okay um and you know like they have that tr with his service the mothers have the trust they have you know their liability that they're professional they know what they're doing they're getting back and forth safely because we have had bad experience using services okay. where your wheelchair is like go, dragging around the car. That has happened. So, <laughs> so then everything is perfect. Okay. My experience on now, as a customer, even as a friend using it, both has been really well. So I, I, it's very reliable to, um, to my point of view. So that's pretty much it. I'm actually glad to hear all these things. You know what I mean? I I never I didn't know much about your business. Like last time we sat down, I never had a chance to um, ask you all these questions. But uh, I'm really uh, glad that I've learned these things, and sure. I actually um, want to keep continuing, you know, sure. in touch and understanding these yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, sure. But for real. But you were telling me more about this uh, little uh, stand-up comedian. You know what I mean? I want to know more about it somehow. You got you got to put me on the spot to understand how did you get the confidence to get on stage, crack a joke? What do you do when people don't laugh? Um, yeah, that yeah. does happen. Sometimes you'll get a really tough crowd. Yeah. It's like the thing is when I get a tough crowd, what I realize instead of making the jokes, I need to interact with them. Like I like I literally like look at them and make eye contact. I'm like, why aren't like Why aren't you laughing? No, no, no I won't say that. <laughs> but I'll make the sarcastic look uh, like um uh, what happened, um, and this was in one of the universities in Qatar, so the, t the crowd is very tough. Yeah. So I, I did, because I think it was new for them yeah. to watch someone with a disability doing comedy. Yeah. So I, I mean, they're like, in shock, right? Like if someone with a disability gets and starts seeing stuff on stage, yeah. you think they would feel awkward, like they wouldn't know how to react? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is this the kind of thing that you're trying to say? Yeah, yeah, that yeah, that happens a lot sometimes. Yeah. yeah. So I when so many times. Mm -hmm. I feel so many times as well. Yeah. So there you go. So what happened? Like I think like I, I was making like a joke around, you know, cut to different places and whatever. Yeah. So I literally bent down to the group of guys, I'm like, Are you laughing because you're a kharuf? And then the entire group of guys started laughing. <laughs> And then I see the girls laughing. I'm like, ah, you know who, who the Haruf is. <laughs> so it got, so you have to interact. So that's what you do with a tough crowd. Instead of making a joke, communicate with them. I have to admit, you got bald humor. You know what I mean? Like straight up. The, you know, you don't even filter it for a bit. They're, but... they're, they're guilty of it. <laughs> you know? That's why Dave Chappelle ran to Africa. Because it is. <laughs> 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 that's, yeah, yeah. that's true sometimes you laugh at things because they were guilty of it yeah, okay. and um, that's the way of grabbing people oh I, I wouldn't know I wouldn't know sure <laughs> sure everyone in, the, everyone in the room they're like oh started looking left and right yeah you're like not me not oh, me. It, yeah. it, it is you guys <laughs> um, but that's what happens when you get a tough crowd you need to communicate with them okay um, that's what I learned and then Comedy, I think it just naturally, like, the thing is, I literally stop caring what people think. Okay. I, like, as long as I'm doing halal comedy, I don't care what others think. You get it? So no cursing, basically. Yeah, yeah that's basically and it. No like, as long jokes, as, right? As, yeah, as long as I'm obeying the law, yeah. I don't care. You're like, no, yeah. I, I don't care. Like, that's pretty much it. I stop caring, and that's what, what actually helped me do comedy better. I've seen a couple of videos about people are, like, cracking. Through comedy, yeah, you bring positive people to. Yeah, I think I think through comedy you bring awareness into the community. 
Um, because I feel like sometimes people get bored of listening to speeches. And even reading politics and yeah, true. long articles. They want some way to uh, read, like get the knowledge throughout a, a happy way, right? The thing, no, the thing is I feel like people have such a short attention span now that you need to, whatever you say needs to be quick and on point. Oh, wow. So that's what punchlines do. Like I said, comedy is like... So, what kind of, like, is the, do you have, like, a story, like, in the comedy? Like, like, do you go throughout a story, like, I went that day and this oh, happened and yeah, this? Yeah. Or do you just crack jokes? Um, it can be both. It really, um, sometimes I have to change my material while I'm on stage. Okay. Just to fit my crowd and my audience. Okay. Because before the show starts, like, I look into the audience and I try to see what's going on. And sometimes by the time I get on stage, it's, like, at the full crowd. So now there's more for people that I didn't see before going on stage. So sometimes I have to change it on the spot. Now, this depends on crowds. But then again, yeah, sometimes they're just straight punchlines and sometimes they're a story. Like I talked about, I went to watch Annabelle. And in the movie, there was a blonde, young little, there was a young girl with blonde hair on wheelchair killing everyone. <laughs> and I came in the cinema when it was dark, okay? So no one saw me coming in. Are you, are you, are you, it gets better. <laughs> were you blonde then? Yeah, 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 I've been blonde for like two years, man. So yeah, so that's when it happened. Um, <laughs> what happened? <laughs> oh, this gets better. So there's a group of guys in soaps and whatever. They're like walking down. Oh my god, they're walking like, like you know those guys are trying to be bodybuilders, but they look like a hexagon. Yeah. Um. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god so yeah that's basically what happened so they have the flashlights on and they're coming down so now they have a flashlight it's like bonded on a wheelchair from behind and they start screaming and i'm like why are people screaming I, i'm like oh okay i look down and the end of the movie what happened now you know because no one saw me coming in yeah and the lights come on, and everyone <laughs> sees a blonde hair girl on a wheelchair on the first floor. <laughs> what happened? Were they screaming or shouting? Um, both. I kind of, some screamed, some was like... It was a really good marketing, man. It was a very good marketing for the movie. <laughs> Annabelle should pay me. They should get you. Get on Hollywood. Let's talk to Ahmed about this. Yeah, um, like, exactly. Like, I need to be paid for that amazing marketing. Do we have a plug to Hollywood, guys? Anyone? Anyone? Are we? No, no, plugs? no, 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 not now. Inshallah, Inshallah. future. Yeah. Um, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, <I don't. laughs> so yeah, that was it. So I talked about that. Um, I talked, uh, I talked that uh, about that on stage, and then I talked about what if, like, sometimes uh, if I'm out with my friends and I'm sitting in the car, and like a kharuf approaches on the side and he doesn't know I'm on wheelchair, so I'm like, is this uh, catfishing in real life? <laughs> 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 that's dark but you know and one of my friends was like well it's a glitch depending on how he looks at it okay so, okay. <laughs> so i know this is wrong but that like that's what i deal with sometimes right uh, so i actually and you crack these jokes on stage oh so yeah. it's funny because it's it is true and it's from my yeah, life yeah, yeah so i feel like the best comedy it comes from your own life I remember I uh, watched this episode back in the day. It was inside the actor's studio, and they were interviewing Dave Chappelle, right? I, I feel like we mentioned him a lot today. But you know what? I feel like he's an inspirational also comedy. And he said that, that he, was, he was asked the question, how do you get inspired mm -hmm. to write your jokes? Do you write jokes? And he's like, not really. He said, just life in general. If you go and you observe and you would realize that human beings are actually... Um, very funny creatures to look at. You know what I mean? And you would crack, and his, like if you've noticed some of the jokes he would crack, it was all based on society, um, the racism he faced in his childhood, and also how, because he said he grew up in Palm Springs, right? Mm -hmm. He's like the only black kid that grew up in Palm, Palm Springs. And he said, I wasn't poor, but I want to thank my parents because I was the only black kid poor in, poor in front of white people. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> so, so he had like a really dark humor. And I felt like this is the kind of comedy that people It's more make. realistic. It's more realistic. But it's somehow, you know, shifted in a very funny way so people can understand it. Yeah. I mean, who wants to sit there and tell you a joke? Uh, have you seen what happened to the ant that fell from the mountain? Or, mm. You know what I mean? It's like, no. 
No, mm-hmm. let's, let's not hear these jokes. Why did the chicken cross the road? Nobody wants to know why. It's like, you know? Uh, I think it was, like, this was so lame. This was all I think. What's the answer? To um, why did chicken cross the road? Anybody knows? Because I ate it. <laughs> no, that's not it. Nando's? Yeah. Okay, that's <laughs> yeah, we're cracking it up. But you know what? <laughs> I feel right. like we're telling us to wrap up. We're, uh, oh, we're reaching so fast with this hours. Yeah. But so, uh, I think that was it. You know, I think at the moment what we need is more representation and normalizing people with disabilities in the media. Okay. And so even for the community to come out and encourage people with disabilities to go into entrepreneuring, comedy, acting, yeah. more into different fields. Yeah. So, you know, from my point of view is that. Um, yeah, because I, I think uh, we can use media, all these uh, different platforms to connect people. That's good. And just connect the society together. That's right? good. Because I think that's the best thing to do. Um, because in a world full of hate, we need some peace. We definitely need some peace. Any last word, Harvey? Uh, not really. Not really? Not really. <laughs> not really? Yeah, I'm just... Uh... I think uh, what Noel is doing, she's right. she's actually right. Yeah. I think we should have the social awareness because some, uh, as I said in the past, when I used to face, uh, when I, as a child, like, uh, yeah. what is he gonna do? What is he gonna face? Yeah. And I think people should change, uh, come out of that. I think the world is changing. We have, if we can have global warming, we can also have like people with, with disabilities who can change the world at the same time. You're right, you're right. Like we can read history, there's a lot of people with disabilities that change history and did a lot for mankind. I mean, look at Stephen Hawking. So. I mean, yeah. I mean, Thank you. Yeah, you're okay. right. One of the, some of the best people in history were actually. Yep. Thank you so much for being a part of uh, this show today. It's actually very motivational, and this is what we aim for here in uh, I Heart Doha podcast. Nothing but positive vibes, great talks, great people, and uh, we'll be back again next Saturday.